Well, today we're going to look at a couple very interesting materials. We're going to call this our Fun with Fire Day. Um, we're going to be doing some different fire-related demonstrations. And right here I've got something that's very interesting. What can we, what can we observe about it? It's shiny. shiny. Okay, shiny. It's, it's a disc. It's a disc shape. It's really the... Magnesium. It's a roll of magnesium. And magnesium is a type of metal, but it's also a type of metal that's quite flammable. But in order for it to burn, you've got to get it very hot. Um, I've got some magnesium here. I can hold my lighter under it, and not much is going to happen because this fire just doesn't burn very hot. So I'm going to use my propane torch to burn the magnesium. And once it starts burning, um, I think it'll be very obvious. But the thing that's very important with magnesium, do not look directly at it while it's burning. You want to kind of look off to the side, look at it out of the corner of your eye, um, because it does burn very brightly. And now it's going. So this is burning magnesium metal. Um, it burns very hot. They actually use it in underwater welding and some applications like that. Um, it's hot enough it can burn underwater. So, very interesting metal there. Burning magnesium. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, well, as it burns, just like if you remember when we burned our steel wool and it oxidizes the steel, it's kind of the same process because as it's burning, it's combining with the oxygen in the air and it's oxidizing the magnesium. So that's what we're left with is kind of a white, almost powdery type substance. Okay. Want to do another one? Nice. Yeah. Yes, okay. definitely. We're going to do this one. This time we're going to cut the lights out when we burn it. Just let you see it. See the difference with it in a darker room. But again, do not look directly at the magnesium as it burns. Uh, Elijah, you want to get the lights there? There's a lot of smoke from that one piece of magnesium. It does smoke a bit, yes. All right, here we go. Burning magnesium, take two. And you notice it takes a while to get it up to temperature, but once it starts burning, it burns very well, fairly quickly. And obviously very brightly. Now, I've got a uh, demonstration we're going to be doing here later in the year that's a lot of fun. I just need some dry ice to uh, do it with. You put some magnesium between blocks of dry ice, and it is extremely spectacular as it burns. But we'll be looking at that after spring break. And there it goes. But you can see now it's very fragile at this point. All right, so burning magnesium. That's the first thing that I wanted to look at. And give me a minute to clean this up and we'll look at our second observation. So for the second thing I want to look at today, I've got a uh, powder here. It's called lycopodium powder. And what lycopodium is, it's a type of dried out, ground up, very finely ground moss, um, which sounds pretty safe, right? Yeah. Yep. But basically what we're going to do with this, now it's got this little symbol on the front here. And uh, what does that symbol mean, Chloe? Uh, danger. Well, what kind of danger? Uh, fire. Flammable, right? Yeah. And this is a flammable material. So let's light it on fire and I will show you how dangerous it is. Huh? Yeah, here is why. Okay, here's why it's dangerous. Same powder. We're just going to drop a little bit on the fire. Drop a little bit on the fire. Static electricity is not our friend on this. Drop a little on the fire. So, that was interesting, right? Yeah. Okay, so we've got a pile of it here burning, and it's burning about like a candle would. But when I just sprinkle a little bit on, all of a sudden, it flares up. Does anybody have an idea as to why? <coughs> Patrick? Maybe it's like, it's like it has a cube and it's, the, it's traveling from, it's like traveling. Okay, but what's, what's different about what's in the air 
kind of falling down as opposed to a pile of it. Maybe because you're trying to like smother it, but it's like the same powder and it's flammable, so it's like making that flare. They don't it, might be, it might be trying, the fire might uh, get to the bottom and then want to travel up. Okay. Kaylin? Maybe the fire wants the sand to stay down so it's trying to pack it down, but when it comes up it, it's trying to get up so it can pack that down. Okay, well let's think about the things a fire needs to burn. We need our fuel, right? And we're using our lycopodium as our fuel. But what else does a fire need to burn? Oxygen. Oxygen. And if we've got a big pile of this kind of tightly packed together, is there a lot of oxygen in there for it? No. But if we've got all these little fine particles floating around in the air, do we have a lot of oxygen between those? Yeah. Yes. And that's the reason that like, every now and then you'll hear about like at sugar factories, you'll hear about an explosion from sugar dust. Because sugar... Uh, especially like powdered sugar or dust from sugar can be very flammable and it can make an explosion. It's like podium powder, powder is very similar. And what I've done, I've actually loaded some of it into a straw and by blowing this across the fire, we get a pretty interesting result. So let me get the torch on. And let's just blow our like podium powder across there, and watch what happens. So we're going to take our straw. Now the first straw I've got is half full of powder. The second straw is completely full of powder. But we're going to try to use this to make us a little flamethrower here. So flamethrower in five, four, three, two, one. Just from that powder being in the air. Flamethrower in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it's in the air! That's the difference with a flammable substance, though. That's the difference between being able to burn as a larger portion and being able to burn as the fine, fine little particles. It's the same thing if you remember when we burn the steel wool. We can take a steel rod, hold it over the fire, it wouldn't burn. But we take the steel wool because the oxygen can get in around all the little steel particles, it's able to burn pretty spectacularly. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one factor of just how you can get the oxygen to the fire that's going to affect how well the fire can burn.